Hi everybody, I'm Belle Holder, the host of UNCTAD Conversations in Barbados. Today, we're at the Lord Erskine Sandiford Center where UNCTAD 15 is taking place. And with this year's conference, there are a lot of firsts. The first time for a small island developing state and the first time for a country in the Caribbean to host UNCTAD. Prime Minister Mia Amar Motley is serving as Barbados' first female Prime Minister and also a first for another female. The incoming Secretary General of UNCTAD is Rebecca Grinspan of Costa Rica. She is an economist and she's a politician. Our UNCTAD conversation with her is straight ahead. so much for taking the time to sit down with us and congratulations on your appointment as the first woman to be the Secretary General of UNCTAD. So it leads me straight into my first question which is when you're the first what kind of pressure does that put on you to set precedent in the role? Well thank you thank you so much Bill and, and let me start by saying how happy I am that this happened in Barbados, <laughs> and that we are here in UNCTAD 15, my first real conference of UNCTAD, and, and uh, really so happy that it happened in my region, in the Americas, yes. So, first of all, let me say that I am very conscious that I am the first woman in UNCTAD because other women fought for me. Uh, this is not a single journey, <laughs> you know, it's not an individual journey. It's something that happens collectively. And many people and many women fought for my rights before, for voting, for education, for equal participation in politics. And I know that you have to make the effort. You have to have the perseverance to do it. You have to have also the family that backs you up. But more important, you have women that fought for you. And that's what I want to do now, to fight also for the women that will come after me. Do you feel any pressure to prove, I deserve this seat at the table, I earned the right to be here, and, I'm, and as you said, I'm gonna leave the door open for other strong women to follow on? Yeah, it, yeah there is pressure, no doubt, but I have been there so many times. <laughs> I was the Vice President of Costa Rica. I was also the first woman in the uh, Ibero-American Secretariat. I was the first woman that uh, was uh, uh, Associate Administrator of UNDP. Uh, so it's not that I doubt myself of my right of being at the table. That's not the issue. I think that the issue is the others to recognize that. <laughs> and what is it that has to happen for equality really to, to, to be at all levels and happen, or even in a, in a conversation, you know. So many times we feel that we are at the table, we say something, a man says the same thing, and the man is cited and we are not. So now I make a point of citing the women that are with me in the table and making a point, you know, and making it, visible. Maybe that is the fight. The fight is not if we feel that we deserve it. We deserve it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it would have been so wonderful to be able to host an in-person conference. I'm yeah. sure that was one of the, th the hurdles that Barbados, of course, had to get over where we won the bid. But then, of course, we're now facing um, a health crisis in the form of the COVID pandemic. But we persevered and we're having a virtual conference. Um, you're coming into UNCTAD exactly that with a worldwide pandemic, a health crisis. Yeah. Does that make your job harder? What is the first thing on your agenda? Yeah, it makes all of us, the job of all of us harder because now it's not only to go ahead, it's to, pre to preclude to go backwards <laughs> uh, so heavily because this pandemic has impacted the developing world in different way ways than the developed world. Uh, for example, in Latin America and the Carib Caribbean, we are 9% of the world population and 30% of the deaths 
worldwide. So it's, it's a disproportionate impact on us. And in your economy, we have been hearing your Prime Minister, Mia Motley, bringing this so importantly to the center stage of the global discussion, yes, that the small island developing states have been hit it so badly in their tourism, in their livelihoods, not only in their health, but also livelihoods. Not because these countries didn't do what they had to do to face the pandemic. They, they, all the CARICOM countries came together to buy vaccines uh, collectively, but they, the vaccines were, ne were not there to be bought because they were bought by others with more muscle to get to the market. So in a way, what we are asking for, and I think that that's the most important thing that is happening also at this conference, is that UNCTAD has to bring the voice of the developing world to the global stage. And we have to find solutions within the multilateral system. Yes, yeah. because the market won't bring those solutions automatically to us. We, we agree that we need the private sector, we need the investment, but we need the public sector investment to be able to counteract the effects of the pandemic, to help people with their livelihoods, to invest in health and education and social protection, and climate resilience, because yeah. you are so badly hit by the climate change agenda, yes. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Prime Minister Mia Motley, and who we know is, is a force. And um, recently, when she appeared at the UN General Assembly, she implored everyone in the room to step up and make a difference for those who are most vulnerable, which leads us right into um, the theme for UNCTAD 15, which mm -hmm. is from inequality and vulnerability to prosperity for all. And I think mm -hmm. that means so much more now than it ever has. What does it mean to you as the incoming Secretary General from, from inequality and vulnerability to prosperity for all? Well, I think that the world right now faces like two big obstacles to overcome this crisis with inclusiveness and sustainability. First, the inequalities the inequalities between countries and within countries that are affecting people in, in, in different ways and that is make, making this recovery divergent. You know, on the one hand, you have the developed world with very strong instruments to recover that I'm glad that they are using it. But the problem is that the developing world doesn't have those instruments also to recover in the same way. And the second thing is uh, the financial resources uh, that are not coming to the developing world in the quantities that we need to attend our needs and the impact of the triple crisis. Yes, climate change, uh, the pandemic, and the socioeconomic impact that the pandemic has had on us. Uh, on the second thing may be important is how do we make the economic system work for all? How do we make trade work for all? We all need trade. I come from a small country too, Costa Rica. We need trade to be able to get the goods we cannot produce, but also to be able to have export earnings and foreign, foreign reserves so we can invest again in our people, in our small markets. Yeah. But trade, the trade rules are not working for all. We have seen in the pandemic the spiking of non-trade tariffs, a obstacles to trade, tr a export restrictions of medicines, of vaccines, of a inputs to be able to produce the goods. So it is unilateral a obstacles to trade and trade barriers hit very deeply the prospects of development of the developing world, especially the small and medium-sized uh, yeah. countries. Okay, so we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, I want to talk more about your economic background and looking at what the economy possibly will look like post-COVID. We'll be right back with more on Onktai Conversations.
Welcome back to UNCTAD Conversations, everybody. Today, we're sitting down with Rebecca Greenspan, who is the newly appointed UNCTAD Secretary General. And um, you have um, an economist background. Um, I know that that means you are, the wheels are already turning and you're already thinking about how can we boost the economies in these small island developing states? What will it look like post-COVID? Well, I think that there, there is a uh, reconfiguration going on. Uh, the digital economy, no doubt, will impact all our countries and the new technologies will impact all our countries. So, for example, we were talking in terms of Barbados, where Barbados has such good uh, human capital because it has invested in education and in health for its people. So probably a, a lot of the future for Barbados will come from the areas of the creative industries and, 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 and uh, uh, the, the uh, talent economy, let's put it that way. So the yes. orange economy. The, the, yeah. What we call the orange economy. You know, well, when I studied, there were no colors to the economy. <laughs> <laughs> now, we talk there's about blue, the green economy, green, the blue orange, economy, the orange yeah. economy, and the purple economy that's so important for us women, yes. So, uh, yes, the orange economy, I think that is a great opportunity. Also, all what has to do with intellectual uh, work, yes, because uh, you have the, the, the raw material and you have this wonderful youth that are thriving to be able to do their own startups and their own ideas for uh, solutions for development. Yes, I think that we have to open that space for our countries to be able to enter the new economy of the uh, 21st century. Right. I think that that's one thing. The second thing is that we have to face the old challenges. Yes, connectivity, not only in terms of internet, but in terms of transport and maritime. Uh, the, we have seen the prices of uh, uh, trade transport spiking and hitting very hardly the developing world. So we have to think about, about trade and logistics, yeah. yes, for the future, because that will be important for the value, uh, the new value a supply chains in, 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 the, in, right. the, in the world. I want when people see this and they hear you, I want, every, I want the ordinary citizen to understand what you do. Mm -hmm. So if there's a gentleman walking down the street mm -hmm. who, I, who we'll refer to as John Q. Public, mm -hmm. and he says, Ms. Greenspan, what do you do? Because he or she, they want to understand mm -hmm. how does what you do impact on my daily life? Yes. What difference does it make yeah. to me? Yeah. What do you say? Okay, I will say, first of all, I, I will try to bring your voice to the global stage because you cannot do that individually. And if we are not there, the decisions that are taken will be worse and not better for us. And so, and trade impacts your life every day, in the goods you buy, in the goods that are produced, in your job. So we try to make that trade that impacts your life more just and more fair for all the citizens of the world. Which leads us into this question. Recently, um, just this week, you signed off on the electronic single window system, which I think, and when Barbadians hear the word asikuda, I think most of us know what that means now for anybody who tries to do any level of business where they have to deal with the port, where they want to import goods and retail them on the island. Um, tell us more about the electronic single window system and how that can impact on individuals who are trying to do business. Yes, we, we signed uh, this, this uh, new agreement with uh, Minister uh, Simons uh, precisely yesterday to invest in the single window. And let me give you one example. You have 28 departments of agencies or bodies of the government that intervene in trade. And so imagine a small business or, or an entrepreneur dealing with 28 different processes to be able to import or to export. What we will do is to bring all of them together to one window. So you will have to go to one place, not to 28 
And so I will make your life easier. And I will make a trade more transparent. And I will make the government have more revenue <laughs> because they will be able to coordinate much better all what is involved in trading, imports and exports. So and you know what that <laughs> entrepreneur will ask you next? They will say, does this single window help to reduce some of the costs yes, and some of the taxes yes. that I'm faced with when I try to import um, goods for retail? The transaction costs will be reduced dramatically. Let me, let me give you one example. Asicuda, that is the platform that we use in, in Barbados, that was uh, made available by ANCTAD in the joint effort with the country. Uh, now, 60% of the goods that enter the country, it, after uh, taxes and duties are paid, 60% are discharged in 24 hours. Before, there were days and sometimes weeks. That's what we expect to happen this year, too. Transaction cost will be reduced. Mm -hmm. not, not taxes, that's not my... <laughs> I, I am not in the Parliament of Barbados. <laughs> but what will be reduced is the time that you lose and the transaction cost that you have to go into to be able to, uh, to, to run your business. Yeah. Um, what new collaborations and relationships can we expect, even between our two countries, Costa Rica and Barbados, perhaps? Um, mm -hmm. Have you thought about what linkages we can create? Well, that's precisely a very important conversation that I had yesterday with your Prime Minister Motley. That has become, let me, let me say, really a reference. I, were wide after her speech in the General Assembly. So let me congratulate you for having such a wonderful leader, <laughs> leader in the country. So uh, I, we were talking with her precisely that we will, the first thing we will do together is uh, this gathering on trade and logistics. Because the problem with Costa Rica, but also the problem even within the CARICOM and the single market of, of the Caribbean is precisely the connections. It takes more time to go to one of our countries neighboring than to go to London. <laughs> yes, so we need to change that. And I am sure that a lot of investment opportunities and trading opportunities will come up if we uh, really improve the, the trade logistics, uh, the ports and and the transport within our countries. Okay, so when we come back after this next commercial break, I want to talk about the possible income outcomes of UNCTAD 15. We'll be right back. Um, I'm so happy that we're having this conversation. And there are some people who feel as though UNCTAD should be downsized or even abolished, leaving the World Trade Organization to handle and address issues of global trade. How do you respond to those individuals? Well, they don't understand what is the division of labor between WTO and UNCTAD. WTO is not a development organization. And I am a supporter of WTO, yes? They, what they do is that they have, they are the rules setting body. They are the legislative body of trade, yes? What they decide becomes then the rule on trade for everybody, yes? And, but they are not a development agency. They don't talk about trade and development. They talk about trade negotiations and trade rules and trade disputes, yes? And that's very important. And that's a very important role for WTO. But what we do is to try to relate trade to development. Because when you negotiate, what is it? How do you know what is the differentiated impact that it has on the developing countries, for example, or in the least developed countries, or the landlocked countries, or in the small developing island? If we don't think about development in a more integrated way, we will take the wrong decisions. And that's our job. 
Our job is to inform, to make the research, the analysis, the capacity building in the countries. So the negotiations will be better and will respond to the needs of development. Because we don't want trade because trade is good in itself. We want trade that will allow us to develop further, to have a development that is resilient, that is inclusive, and that is sustainable. Yeah. I think any occasion that has a number of countries and getting people together to discuss more positive outcomes for everyone is always a good thing, mm -hmm. always. And, yeah. I, and perhaps we need to do more of it. Mm -hmm. um, however, when we look at these conferences mm -hmm. and even at UNCTAD, um, I learned that um, Barbados's former Prime Minister, Owen Arthur, before his death, was looking at outcomes. So yes, we are excited, we get at the table, we make these connections and these collaborations and we have these conversations around development and what, we, what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at to make sure that we move from the discussion phase yeah. and paperwork to, to making sure exactly that we get some results? Okay, it's a very important question and I really believe that we have to be accountable to the citizen industry that you were telling me about, to the citizens of the world. So I think that first, the priority of vaccines, because that is what we all are worried about, and we need to be a voice to push for vaccines and to access for va a, a, of vaccines for all of us, a universal you know, effort. And that is not happening yet. And uh, there are many promises, but the truth is that time of, is of essence. So my, our first commitment is to continue pushing for the vaccines to be available as quick as possible, because that means lives and livelihoods. The other day I was told, for example, that uh, for these uh, small developing islands, 41 million people, you need to vaccinate, yes? The world is vaccinating 41 million people per day. So it will take two days to vaccinate all the population of the small developing countries and allow them to recover tourism and to the recover the livelihoods that they have lost during the pandemic. And why is that not happening. Somebody has to fight yes. and we are fighting for that. So vaccines, first thing. The waiver on intellectual property rights while the pandemic lasts. I think that is very important because it will allow to expand production and also to push for technology transfer and knowledge. So we could have easier vaccine access everywhere in production in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. not only in the countries that are now the center of production for the vaccines. Third point, what we uh, spoke about, uh, uh, logistics, no? ports, uh, customs, transport. That's a very concrete thing. And the expertise is in my organization, is in ANCTAD. ANCTAD is the expert on those issues. Debt and financing for the developing world. We are pushing for a more integrated approach to debt. If we don't do that, there will be no resources to do the investments you have to yeah. do for the people. So we need to free the fiscal space of the developing world for them to be able to invest in their, their population. So the debt uh, restructuring and debt relief and financing for development because without more resources from the development banks, from the Bretton Woods institutions, from the international financing system, we won't be able to do what we have to do to have a more equitable future. Thank you so much for taking the time out of, I know what would be your very busy schedule to sit down with us. I think it's really important to make sure that your voice is heard and people understand what your goals are and uh, we congratulate you once again on your new appointment and we wish you the very, very best. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for watching UNCTAD Conversations. I'm Belle Holder. Take care, everybody.